let's go watch it in 2D. No, let's go watch it in 3D. But if we watch it in 3D, then is it worth the cost? Hello, everybody! Rue, what's up? Wait a minute. Three <laughs> girls, <laughs> one wife, Something is missing. This guy. Oh, there's my boy. I know you love your dada. Go on, say it. Dada. Dada. Yes, of course he loves you. He just he just doesn't show it on his face. Or with his body language. <laughs> right, Prue Jr., come on. Gru, I need a word with you. Your family's lives are at stake. What? Maxi Rubal has escaped from prison. I'm coming for my revenge, Groot! <laughs> we have to get to the safe house. It has a vendor machine! Oh. I love this place! <laughs> Look up! <laughs> hello, hello, hello! This is Adolf, and I have with me Jacob. Hi, everybody. And today, you're reviewing Despicable Me 4. So, as always, we're going to talk about the 3D aspect first. How is the 3D? Mm -hmm. Oh, man, it's some of the best 3D I've seen since Avatar 2. All right. Like one of the best animated 3Ds in a long time? Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, I thought Inside Out 2's 3D was good, but this one, it just takes the cake on greatness. All right. Tell me more. I mean, why? Uh, I mean, it was just like... Like the the first couple of minutes, I I wasn't really expecting much because I I mean to be fair, it was just a credit sequence and it was just a lot of fast movement. It was kind of flatter than I'd like, but then like once everything settled down, it just got to be constant pop out city. It was just constantly stuff was popping out your face. It was so good. Um, you're being reviewed. Say limbs, faces, lasers, particles. Yes, it <laughs> just a whole bunch of stuff pretty constantly coming out towards the audience. It was great. Um, so there's a scene early on with a cockroach. Yeah, uh, well, it, it was Will Ferrell's character who is transforming into a cockroach for unknown reasons, and he he holds his hand out with a cockroach in his hand, like one of his his minions, I guess. And it just brings out towards the audience, and it's like right there in your face, and you could feel like you could reach out and grab it. It was brilliant. Okay, um, so it just it it, t it hits out of the park. Yes, there's no negative to the 3D aspect at all. This is exactly what you want in an animated movie. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, besides the first couple minutes, whenever like there was just fast movement and. It wasn't as 3D as I like, except for like the you know the names of the credits kind of coming up towards the audience. But it, you know, it was still great. It was like brilliant 3D throughout. I mean, that's not even really a negative. It's just par for the course of fast moving images. You can't really focus on 3D that well. So perfect in every way. Okay, so I guess your final verdict is what exactly? <laughs> uh, it's a 10 out of 10. I would say editor's choice. This is uh this is probably one of the best three Ds for you this year, right? Yes. Yeah, so far it's the best. Okay. Let's get to the movie itself. So how is Despicable Me for? Oh it was it, it's so mid. It is mediocre beyond belief. They're just scraping the bottom of the barrel for ideas. All right, so the basic plot is? Well, uh, it's, it starts off with Gru going to his uh, high school uh, reunion, and he meets his old enemy named uh, Maxime, and uh, he's the one who's wanted to turn into the aforementioned cockroach. And he's there essentially to arrest him, and he does get arrested, and then he gets uh, he frees himself, and you don't even see him escape it from jail, which would have been cool, but he's told that he escapes from jail. And so grew and his family, including a new kid grew junior have to, uh, go into witness protection 
and they have to assume new lives. And then it just splits off into little mini movies, essentially, with each of the characters. And it's just it's not a mess, but it's just very unfocused movie. OK, so there's just super unfocused. <laughs> So there's like, what, A, B, C, D, E, F plots? Yeah, essentially, because, like, you have Gru who is wanting to, for some odd reason, uh, be friends with their neighbor, and then the neighbor child wants him to pull a heist to steal a mascot of the high school he attended. And then you have the three girls who want to uh, essentially just fit in but you don't really see them trying to fit in there's like no other characters to they interact with you have five specific minions turning into superheroes essentially and then you have the wife trying to assimilate in her role of being a hairdresser it's just it's unfocused (laughs) it is so unfocused and boring (laughs) do all the stories kind of come together at the end or nah it just it comes together whenever the the bad guy finally figures out where they're at, and that's it. They don't really converge in a satisfying way. It's just mainly Gru versus Maxime, and that's it. With the help with the little minions who have retired, quote unquote. Uh, <laughs> it feels like a TV pilot, almost like a two parter or something. Okay, um, what did you like about it? There, there, there were some funny moments. Uh, I'll give it that. You know, I mean, every once in a while there'll be a, a thing with the minions that's kind of funny, or a little background animation part with the minions. It's like, oh, you see, it's like off in the background. But, yeah, that's kind of amusing. But everything else was just so rote and boring. Um, and the anim- and the animation was also great, as you know, par for the course for Illumination. So, if you haven't seen the other three Despicable Me movies and the Minion movies, are you okay to watch this or not really? I mean, you're okay. You're just going to be kind of lost where, like, certain characters, like, when did Gru have a wife and why is Gru not a bad guy anymore, per se? But, I mean, besides that, you should be fine with just walking in blind if you want to watch this movie. Okay, um... So it kind of sounds like it's a kind of like a cash grab. Is that accurate? Yeah, it is a total cash grab. It is. I mean, I mean, every, all of them since the first one have really been cash grabs. Honestly, you know, it's there's a lot of focus on minions and their shenanigans as usual, and it, it's just starting to get old. But you know, there's still going to be more minions movies because these all these movies have been hits. <laughs> so I don't know when it's going to stop. All right. Um, is there anything else you want to mention about the movie itself? Uh, I mean, kid, kids are going to like it. I'm sure there's going to be your 60 year old aunts on Facebook who are going to adore this movie. But I mean, besides great 3d, it's not worth watching. It's still a five out of 10 for me. It, it's just boring. And besides, and there's going to be some stuff for adults. That's, kind of funny but way out of date and the soundtrack is includes hits from like 20 30 years ago that's for the adults i guess but, eh. oh and there's like it's this just, thing eh. called mega millions in there what's that about yeah um it's just the 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 company that uh Grew works for called the Anti Villain League or AVL they're like we got this new project that we're wanting to convert uh to test out uh, converting minions into mega minions. And there's like a whole scene about like five minutes long where they're doing a test run. And it's sort of an essential commentary on comic book movies. Now, (laughs) like we're sick and tired of comic book movies. And, you know, because the minions screw up everything (laughs) accidentally. And so they're forced to retire until they come out of retirement to help grew at the end. Yeah, like if you if you're just wanting eye candy, watch this movie. That's it. That's all I would really recommend about is the animation and the three D. Okay, I guess that's gonna be it for our review. Uh thank you for listening. Bye. Bye everybody. Before this podcast wraps up, I wanna thank MK Ultra, Gravity Head Zero, and Axe Folk for being my super VIP patrons on Patreon. 
You can find 3D or 2D on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, and more. Just look for 3D or 2D. Links are in the info box. If you want to send us listener mail, our email address is email 3D or 2D at gmail.com. Thank you for either listening or watching this podcast. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.